I, I think uh, my talk's going to be a little bit different from uh, the, the other ones here. The, the general context is, is just um, some of the issues surrounding uh, the design and planning of association studies. Um, and so association studies, is, as David mentioned, I mean, their goal is in some sense to um, dissect the genetic basis of complex diseases. Um, in particular, that could be susceptibility to nicotine addiction, for example. Uh, and David also mentioned that there are some issues surrounding what a genetic population is, and, and part of what I want to discuss is why that's relevant for the planning of association studies. Um, I'll first have to uh, define a couple of terms that, um, that we use when describing um, the various issues surrounding uh, planning of association studies, and the main thing is something called linkage disequilibrium. And linkage disequilibrium deals with the non-random association of alleles at different sites. So here, these two columns represent um, single nucleotide polymorphism. So you can think of it as some individuals at a particular nucleotide site will have an A and some will have a G. And what we're interested in is sometimes if you have an allele at one site, it can predict what allele you have at another site. So in this example, all individuals that have an A at the first site will have a C at the second site. Uh, in contrast, there are situations where what allele you have at the first site gives you no information about what allele you would have at the second site. So here, if you have an A at the first site, it does not tell you anything about whether you would have a C or a T at the second site. And so linkage disequilibrium refers to this non-random association. In this case, this would be described as having a high level of linkage disequilibrium, and this example would be described as having no linkage disequilibrium or, or a low level. So uh, the, the relevance of this, um, I'll, I'll try and describe briefly why this uh, linkage disequilibrium, or LD as it's often called, is, is relevant. Uh, if you look at uh, a sample of individuals, these individuals are related to each other, and I've tried to draw a little cartoon here showing, in some sense, representing the genealogy or the re relationships among individuals. What we often think of is that there are certain mutations that may affect um, you know, some complex trait, and those mutations show up at a specific time and will occur in a group of individuals that are related to each other, or a group of individuals in this picture that are near each other on this tree. And you could tell that by saying that they may have a different nucleotide site at a particular, um, at a particular site than, than other individuals do. If you were to look at nearby sequence, you may find instead another mutation. So this mutation may have no effect on your fitness and no effect on, on susceptibility to alcoholism. But if you, just by the structure of this tree here, when you look at which individuals have which allele, the two lines here actually are in linkage disequilibrium with each other. And, and by that it means in this example, every time you have a T at this site, you also have an A at this site. And if you're looking for individuals that have this um, mutation of interest, they're all ones who have a G at this other site that's completely unrelated. Uh, so the goal of association studies in some sense is to try and use these indirect associations to, to get at the mutations that we are actually interested in that will affect um, disease susceptibility. Uh, and, and the relationship that's most important, I guess sort of the main point of what I want to emphasize in these few minutes is just that um, when you're planning association studies, um, unless you have an infinite supply of money, you want to design a study with an appropriate marker density, and that marker density is going to depend on the levels of linkage disequilibrium in your population. And in particular, populations, however you want to define them, that have low levels of linkage disequilibrium will need higher marker densities than other populations that have higher levels of linkage disequilibrium. So this is, this is what the relevance of linkage disequilibrium is. And I just want to spend 
the other few minutes of my talk saying something about what patterns of linkage to equilibrium are actually like in human populations. Uh, first off, uh, one major um, descriptive way of looking at linkage to equilibrium is something called a haplotype block. I don't know if you've heard of that before. One way of uh, viewing it is, is it's a thought that like when you look at um, our DNA sequences, they can be broken up into blocks of sites that are in strong linkage to equilibrium with each other, separated by other sites, and then you might have another group of sites that are in strong linkage to equilibrium with each other. And these haplotype blocks are some way of quantifying linkage to equilibrium. So for example, if you have a population that has very long or very large haplotype blocks, that's another way of saying that that population has a large amount of linkage to equilibrium, which also is a way of saying that association studies in those populations will not need very many markers. So in part because of this kind of description, um, there's uh, an international effort to categorize patterns of linkage to equilibrium across different human populations. Um, and this, uh, in, in theory, will genotype five million single nucleotide polymorphisms by the end of the year in uh, 270 individuals from four different populations. The, the hope is that all of this data will help in the planning of future association studies. The only thing I want to emphasize is that we already know uh, th that there are large differences in this levels of linkage to equilibrium among different populations. And let me try and show a little bit of data that would um, hint at that. Uh, this figure here, it may be hard to read if you haven't seen these before, looks at all, if you look at a, a, a collection of, of, of SNPs, each square here is a comparison of two of them. And the only thing that I want to point out is just the color represents whether you have a high level of linkage to equilibrium or a low level of linkage to equilibrium. And so a population that has a lot of red squares has a lot of linkage to equilibrium. Uh, you can, uh, there's also a spatial structure so that sites that are very near each other on this graph show up as near each other and they show up in these little blocks that are the same thing as the haplotype blocks that I showed a couple slides earlier. And the big point is that if you take the same region and you look in a different population, so this is a, a Caucasian sample, if you look uh, instead at, at a sample that was taken from Nigeria, you'll see that there's a pretty big difference in the total number of red squares. So there are just many fewer in this population. And, and these are looking at the same SNPs in the same region. And it just happens that there's less linkage disequilibrium in this population. If you compare over a lot of different regions, you can see the same thing, namely that uh, the Caucasian population tends to have more haplotype blocks and longer haplotype blocks than this uh, certain West African population does. And, you know, the, the basic summary is that, at least for, you know, this study, that the Caucasian population has much more linkage to equilibrium. And the conclusion would be, in general, if you're doing association studies and you're looking at what kind of marker density you're going to need, it would differ tremendously. You would need many more markers if you were studying this population than you would if you're studying that one. Uh, so I just want to conclude um, that at least as a rough uh, approximation, what we do seem to know is that um, populations that have a substantial component of sub-Saharan African ancestry tend to have less linkage to equilibrium than all other populations. And this would be the, the basic summary that people have found so far. Uh, and the, the conclusion based on that is that association studies in those populations will require a greater marker density than in others. Uh, and I'll just sort of add that at the moment, very little is known about levels in linkage to equilibrium in a wider range of populations. There have only been a handful of studies so far, but within the next year or two, um, we'll have a much better handle on this. And that will help in the planning of association studies in, in whatever particular population one wants to study. Thank you very much.